<clears throat> Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back to another Mrs. Hawk story time. Today, we are going to be reading a story that you guys are very familiar with, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. This is the regular Goldilocks and the Three Bears book. So we're going to read around Goldilocks and the Three Bears. This is a Caldecott a winning book, which means it's a... Um, a very good book from uh, what an honor. So Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Once there was a little girl named Goldilocks. What a sweet child, said someone new in town. That's what you think, said a neighbor. And notice this word you. But instead of saying, that's what you think, it's, that's what you think, which makes the person say, hmm, maybe other people don't think she's a good little girl. Let's read on to find. One morning, Goldilocks' mother sent her to buy some muffins in the next village. You must promise not to take the shortcut. It sounds like Red Riding Hood's mom's uh, advice, too. You must not take the shortcut through the forest, she said. I've heard that bears live there. I promise, said Goldilocks. But to tell the truth, Goldilocks was one of those naughty little girls who do ex uh, exactly as they please. So if she's a naughty little girl that does exactly as she pleases, my prediction is she's not going to listen to what mom told her to do. And that's probably going to get her in trouble. So as we can see right now, guess where she's going? Into the woods. It says shortcut at the top. And then there's all these warning signs. Danger, very risky, not a good idea. Turn back, go the other way. Do you think Goldilocks listens? I don't think so. Meanwhile, in a clearing deeper inside the forest in a charming house all their own, a family of brown bears was sitting down to breakfast. So they look like normal bears. I'm making an observation because you need to pay attention to the illustrations of the book because they also give you information. I don't just skip over this page because it doesn't have words. I see that there's a bear in there and he's wearing a suit. There's a mama bear. She's dressed up and a baby bear sitting at a little tiny chair. They're eating some breakfast. It's a nice little house. Looks like they do some gardening, kind of like a normal family. Patooey, cried old Papa Bear. The porridge is scalding. It burned my tongue. I can make a connection to this. If I heat up something too hot and I go to eat it and it burns my tongue, I'm like, oh, I can't eat it anymore. I got to set it aside to let it cool a little bit. I'm dying, cried baby bear. Now really, said mama bear, who was kind of a medium size. That's quite enough. I know, said Papa Bear. Why don't we go for a spin while the porridge is cooling? Excellent, said Mama Bear. So they got on their rusty old bicycle and off they went. They're all dressed nice. Look, she's got flowers in her hair. A few minutes later, <clears throat> Goldilocks arrives. Dun, dun, dun at the bear's house. She walked right in without even bothering to knock. I mean, what kind of person does that? Unless you plan on robbing somebody's house. I, I would never walk in someone's house without knocking on the door. 
On the dining room table were three inviting bowls of porridge. Porridge is kind of an old word, but it's really, we say oatmeal now. Don't mind if I do, said Goldilocks, helping herself to the biggest bowl. I mean, this child has no manners. So we see her over there. She's taking the biggest bowl of food. But the porridge in the biggest bowl was much too hot. Patooey, cried Goldilocks, and she spat it out. Next, she tasted the porridge in the medium-sized bowl, but that porridge was much too cold. Look at her face, like she's angry that free food is too cold. And look at the mess she's making, too. Mm-mm-mm. It says, then Goldilocks tasted the porridge and the little bowl, and it was just right. Neither too hot nor too cold. In fact, she liked it so much that she gobbled it all up. And this is the part of the story I remember. It says, being full and satisfied, Goldilocks thought it'd be great to have a, a look around. So right away, she noticed a lot of coarse brown fur everywhere. They must have kittens. That's her thought. They must have kittens, even though her mom warned them that there was bears that lived in there, that area. In the parlor, so that's kind of like the living room, there were three chairs. Don't mind if I do, she said, climbing into the biggest one. The biggest chair was much too hard and she couldn't get comfortable. Well, she's just making herself at home. It says, bless our happy home. I mean, to think that the bears don't live there is kind of silly because all she has to do is look at the pictures on the wall and see they have pictures of their bear family. She may not be the smartest little girl either. Let's see, the next chair that she sat in. Next, she sat in the medium-sized chair, but that chair was much too soft. And she thought she might never get out of it because she kind of just got sucked into it. Let's guess. I know the pattern of the story. Goldilocks sat in the little chair and that was just right neither too hard nor too soft. In fact, she liked it so much that she rocked and rocked until the chair fell completely to pieces. She broke the chair. You'd think maybe at that point you'd leave a note feeling bad. Man, okay, I ate their food, but now I just broke their chair. Story's not over yet. Ah. With all that rocking left Goldilocks quite tuckered out. Ooh, I could take a little snooze, she said. So she went to look for a comfy place to nap. Upstairs were three beds. I don't mind if I do, said Goldilocks. And she got into the biggest one. But the head of the biggest bed was much too high. There she is yawning. Here she is in the bed. And it's just too big for her. Daddy. Next, she tried the medium-sized bed. But the head on that bed was much too low. And Goldilocks tried the little bed, and it was just right. Soon she was all nice and cozy and sound asleep. She did not hear the bears come home. This is the bed that she's in. She can tell it's a little kid's room. I mean, he has a drawing of something that says mom with a bear on it. Again, not the smartest kid. 
The three bears were mighty hungry for breakfast, but when they went in, they could scarcely believe their eyes. Somebody has been in my porridge, said Papa Bear. Somebody has been in my porridge, said Mama Bear. Somebody has been in my porridge, said Baby Bear, and they've eaten it all up. So their tongues are out, they're hungry, they're upset, they're kind of confused. Who would have come in and eaten all their porridge? It says, bless our home. So now they come in and they're going to go sit in their chairs. It says, in the parlor, the three bears were in for another little surprise. Somebody's been sitting in my chair, said Papa Bear. Somebody's been sitting in my chair, said Mama Bear. Somebody's been sitting in my chair, said Baby Bear. And they broke it to smithereens. You know, he's probably really sad. His chair is broken. Where did they go next? They're going to go upstairs, of course. The three bears went upstairs on tiptoe, not knowing what they would discover. At first, everything seemed fine, but then Papa Bear lay down on his big brass bed. Somebody's been lying in my bed, he cried, and he was not amused. And laying in his bed. In his mama's bed. Eat gads! It's like, oh my gosh, cried Mama Bear. Somebody's been lying in my bed. Look, cried Baby Bear. Somebody's been lying in my bed, and she's still there. So now you imagine you've got three bears standing over little Goldilocks, who has probably just been woken up out of a slumber to three giant bears staring at her. Now see here, roared Papa Bear. Goldilocks woke up with a start. And her eyes nearly popped out of her head. But before the bears could demand a proper explanation, Goldilocks was out of bed, out the window, and on her way home. Who was that little girl, asked Baby Bear. I have no idea, said Mama Bear, but I hope we never see her again. And they never did. Do you think they never saw her again because she learned her lesson and she was scared to go back to their house? I bet. I mean, she broke into their house, ate their food, broke a chair, and slept in their bed. If this story happened today, that person would probably be in jail. So... Let's think about our character Goldilocks. Not about what she looks like. Not about, oh, she's wearing a purple dress. She's a girl. She's got a bow in her hair. Let's think about some of her actions, some of the things that she did. Well, first, she didn't listen to her mom and dad. Second, she just walked into some stranger's house. Third, she ate some stranger's food and made a mess in their kitchen. Then she sat in their chairs and then broke one of the chairs. Then she decided it wasn't enough. She went upstairs, laid in all of their beds, and took a sleep and fell asleep on one of their beds. And instead of, at the end, waking up and being, I'm so sorry, I was my mistake, can I pay you back? Can I work to get you a new chair? Let me make you some new breakfast. She ran away, kind of like a coward. So we need to think about Goldilocks. Is she a good girl? Is she a good character? She's a bad girl, a bad character. She's a bad character, a bad girl. Why? All right, boys and girls, those are some things to think about when you have to do your reading response today. Bye.